it says, my husband recently passed away. I don't have money for cremation. My kids and I are staying in the shelter. Please help if you can. God bless. I hold up a sign and someone threw food on me the other day when I asked for a dollar. He pulled me into the alley and he was like, this is exactly what he said. He was like, you know what I want. He was like, if you don't suck my dick, I don't know if I can say that. He was like, I'm going to literally kill you. So I don't want to like drag him through this, you know? No, no, no. Starbucks. By Starbucks. And then you, yeah, you caught me around the corner. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, and it was your sign that caught my attention. Mm -hmm. Can you see the sign? It says, my husband recently passed away. I don't have money for cremation. My kids and I are staying in the shelter. Please help if you can. God bless. Kristen, I'm sorry. Um, you don't mind sharing, how did your husband lose? Um, he, he got, so he started having headaches uh -huh. and he went to the doctor and he had a tumor on his brain and it was already like so big, um, and that like they couldn't operate on it. It was like non operable because of where it was at and they gave him three months to live and he died a month and a half later. So, like, we didn't have, I'm 37, he was almost 39, like, we didn't have, like, like, funeral, like, plans, you know what I mean? Like, we didn't pick any of that stuff out because, I mean, we didn't have the money, but, like, we're not, nobody expects somebody to go through that, you know? So, um, we were living in, like, a month-to-month -month lease. And um, when you live in a month, 30 day, like month to month, they don't have to give you 30 days notice to like evict you. So we just moved out, like me and my kids when the rent came around because I couldn't pay rent. And so we're staying in a shelter now. Yeah, so. you just taught me something new because I didn't know they didn't have to eat. Yeah, anything. yeah. So where was y'all staying at at the time? Uh, we had an apartment down here. So I, when he was alive, I was at Wayne State. Oh. I had a 3.9 GPA in business. Um, like we had normal lives, like everything was normal. Right. And it went from like that to like this, right. like so quick. Okay, so you were in school? Yes. And he was working? Yeah, he paid all the bills. He was a union worker, so he actually did like the floors in Little Caesar Arena, like mm -hmm. all the tile, like terrazzo, like he did stuff like that, like okay. construction. So he made good money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And what did you have school for? Business. Okay. I went to school originally for social work, and then I decided that I had enough of my own problems, and it didn't pay well. Like even if you get your master's, it pays more for social work. But I just decided that's not what I wanted, so I switched it to business. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because so, you can do anything with business. Right. You know. How long um, did you have left before you was done with your? I only have 31 credits left. So I have like 100 or 32 uh, credits. Left. I have 100 credits right now. Okay. So that's like two semesters basically. If you go full time. Yep. Okay. Okay. And you only had how many kids? I had two. Two kids. I have, well, I have an older son who's with another guy. Okay. Me and him broke up and then whatever. I don't need to tell that story. But, um, and then we have a kid together too. Okay. But he, was raising my other son as well. Right, right. So it was his, they were exactly. both his kids. So. Exactly. Yeah. Because your husband, like you said, was your high school sweetheart. Right. I'm 37 yeah. and we were together, well, we were together longer than 20 years. I was actually 15 when we met, so that's what, 25, 22, 22 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep. Where are you from? Uh, I was born and raised in Ann Arbor. Okay. And then I moved to Macomb County for a couple years and then here. Okay. Yeah. So you went to high school and stuff in Ann Arbor? Ann Arbor, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so when did you and your husband move out to Detroit? Um, like two, three years ago. 
okay. three years ago. I was in, we were in Macomb for six years. I went to um, Macomb Community College. Okay. And then we came here and I went to Wayne State. Oh my yeah. gosh. And he worked, he worked a lot down here. So it was convenient. Right. You know? Makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. So, did you ever experiment drugs, or? Yeah, I went through my whole party phase. Um, in my 20s, I did a lot of drinking, and I had a huge problem with that. I don't drink anymore. Um, I smoked a lot of weed. I do not smoke weed. It makes me paranoid, super paranoid. I smoke cigarettes, because it's, like, my one... It like helps me, you know, and, um, and I did a lot of cocaine in my twenties too, cause I worked at bars and it just, it went with it. Right. You know what I mean? It yeah. just, you know, and a lot of people assume that because I'm homeless, I'm like doing something or some kind of drug, but I don't, I always look tired because I don't fucking sleep. If I sleep, it's like I fall asleep for a couple hours and then I wake up and remember how this is my fucking life. And then I freak out. So I have a lot of PTSD and like triggers you know, so I always look tired and everybody's like, oh, did your husband die from a drug overdose? Like it's, that's the one thing they always say first is how did he die from overdose? Always. And I'm like, why, why, why would you just say that? Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, he didn't. Me and my mom don't get along. My mom was an addict when I was growing up. So I moved out when I was 12, long story there, but, um, so like my grandparents kind of raised me and like my, my friend's parents helped out, but she got sober and like, she's well now, mm -hmm. which is cool for my, my grandkids. But like me and her, like, I'm not even, I can't even go to her apartment cause we fight so much that her landlord like banned me from there. Like for like, we, she, my mom is incapable of like emotion, like showing emotion and like, so like we just clash, you know what I mean? And it's like, she, it's weird because it's like, my parents loved my brother differently than me. And then like, I see the way my mom loves my kids. And it's like weird because I never had that. It's the same. Um, mothers raise their daughters. They love their sons. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, two boys. And you know, they say usually grandparents soften up with the grandkids. Right. And not, not only are they grandkids, but they grand boys. Exactly. Too. It's something about the boys. Mm -hmm. I really am. You can't go stay with your mother in law. Mm -hmm. I just, we don't have that kind of relationship, you know? And she's got her own family, you know, husband and her two kids, other, uh, her. Uh, boy and girl are living there. His brother and sister. So it's like I, I don't have any family. So where have you been sleeping? Um, sometimes I sleep, um, in this uh, apartment building, like in the basement. Like nobody stays down there. But, um, he locked the door the other night, so I can't go back there. And then sometimes I go to the casino and like just stay in there when it's cold. Well, sometimes outside used to sleep under a bridge yeah because it get dangerous so like how do you I, yeah it does get dangerous I was I was attacked a couple of times I've been attacked already I'm like sexually assaulted in an alley the other night and it's only been what a week and a half it's like I I have to like I have a weapon now that I carry at night it's it's yeah. called my it's called my um clocker knocker period I have to, it's like, it's like a heart, it's like a stick, but it's like metal. So where was you at when, when, uh, I was, that's what you I was on Woodward when, when, um, the guy sexually assaulted me in the alley and then, um, the, uh, a group full of guys were, ch was chasing me. It was over by, um, and MGM casino. Mm -hmm. Like I went and all this happened in the same night or no, it was the same week. It, okay. it was like, I swear to God, it was like every day something was happening yeah. to me. And it's like hard being down here, you know, it's like I'm a decent looking white female and like, you know what I mean? Like I'm the minority, right. it seems like, because there aren't a lot of white females down here that are homeless. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So they're not roaming around the streets, um, you know, and I, a lot of people like, they don't, they're like, hey, white girl, white girl, white girl. And like, that's how they identify me. And I hate it. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. You know, and like my kids are mixed, so it's like, you know what I mean? I wouldn't want somebody saying like, like how would you feel if I was like, hey, black boy? Because yeah. you know damn well if I said that, I would be considered a racist. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. People would take yeah. that far. Yeah, yeah it would be a problem. And so, like, yeah. it's cool when they do it. Or snowflake or... Exactly, snow bunny mm-hmm. or... Uh, and so, it really upsets me, but that's just how it is. And, like, if you go get out into the further neighborhoods, like where the like drugs and stuff are and like the projects mm-hmm. it's even worse yeah I don't know. it's even worse mm-hmm. like so he was like on the work he was like duck walking the alley i was walking past and this guy was like he he stopped me and he was like hey you were at my apartment the other night and i was like he was like pointing to his building i was like no i've never literally never been there in my life he's like yeah you were there with your sister i was like that's weird i don't have a sister and he pulled me into the alley and he was like this is exactly what he said. He was like, you know what I want? He was like, if you don't suck my dick, I don't know if I can say that. He was like, I'm going to literally kill you. And I was like scared. I, I believed him. I believed him that he would kill me. What's he going to do? Black. What do you look like? He was older. He was like in his, I would say 50s. Bald, Bald. chunky, fat, ugly, a low like life. Shorter, tall. He was shorter, I believe. He was the same height, like how much taller he was. I would say he was maybe 5'10", maybe 5'11", I don't know. Yeah. And see, that's why we got to, like, bring awareness to certain shit. Like, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, maybe we could have did something about it. Right. Been able to call me or somebody, you know what I'm saying? But that that kind of stuff happens all the time, you know, like sex sex trafficking and, and young women. It's it's so he just came, so he walked in, he just came out of like he followed me onto the alley. He bummed me like like by the alley and then pushed me. In. Yeah, I was walking by. I didn't go in the alley. I don't know. He didn't pull one out. I wasn't trying to find out. I just did what he had, what he said. Because it's like kill or be killed or uh, fight or flight mode. Like I was like, just do what he, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't have a gun on me. Had I had one or my clocker mopper, I would have fought. Yeah. When you get your clocker. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, just the other night. Like, so what, what was the incident that made you say, I need me something to protect myself? That one. That one? Mm-hmm. And what happened when the guys was chasing you? They, they just called out my name like they knew me, and I didn't know who the fuck they were. They were like, Kiki, come here, bitch, like that. And I'm like, oh, God. They were, like, running down an alley after me, so I ran. Ran to the um, fire station because it was right down the street. They called the cops. The cops never came. Like, the cops, like... Who called it up? The fire station. Uh-huh. So I was like, can you guys just drive me back to that building, like, so I don't have to walk alone? And they, like, were not concerned at all, the fire people. They were like, we can't really do anything. I was like, dude, they were about to, like, do something to me. And they're like, well, they didn't. That's exactly what they said. Wow. I was like, okay, so they have to do something first. So right. we can't we can't take preventative measures. And and usually, so, usually you would think because you're a white woman, they would. They would you know what I'm saying? It's the right complexion. It's, that's not what it is. But because, yes, but because I'm homeless mm-hmm. and I look like this, I'm not your typical white business one. If it was like a, a woman in a Lexus with a business suit on, hell yeah, they would have, but not me. Right. Right. I'm just another, um, you know. Uh, you drag it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You got all your clothes together. I don't have, I don't have, like, I'll, like, I like get an outfit and then like just throw my old outfit away because I don't have anywhere to like put it or wash it. I never know where I'm going to sleep. And then like I'll go to Salvation Army if I get a couple dollars and like get a new outfit, throw the old one away, and then I wear the same thing for like four or five days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't have your clothes do look clean. Those do look new. This yeah. this one? No, actually somebody bought this. About your leggings. These leggings I bought from Salvation Army. Okay. Um they were like two, three dollars. Someone gave this to me yesterday and they got it at um a local shop, like a vintage like a it was like a resale, but then they also have local um brand, like people who make brands in Detroit and they got me this sweater. Okay. So at, last week a lady a random lady bought me a Nike outfit and these Nike That's shoes. Good. Yeah. So eight. Okay, so how can I help you come up with a plan to 
Um, I think maybe, maybe if you put my story up and like people can hear it, like maybe, you know, people will want to like help me or help me with resources, you know, like that's a start. Um, you know, cause people, people, there are people who have empathy and can understand, you know, where I've been. And there are people that don't have it. Someone, I hold up a sign and someone threw food on me the other day when I asked for a dollar. So you get people, uh, the Tigers game. Mm -hmm. So you get people who help and you get people who are very not nice. You know, I'm like, um, excuse me, my husband passed away. Good for him. Like I've had people say that. So you just never know. Um, so that's how I like make money for like diapers and food and stuff right now. I, I'm willing to work, but the whole thing is like, how do you go in for an interview when you can't, like you don't have clothes and stuff like the shelter, I shower and stuff there, but like they don't provide clothes and stuff there. Like it's just a, a shelter and you have to like be out at a certain time and sign up and be in at a certain time at night. So it's just, um, it's hard right now. I don't have an ID or uh, birth certificate or anything. So like that's, I panhandle, like that's how so I- you don't have an ID? Mm -mm. Why not? What happened to me? Every, I lost, everything's gone. Like, I don't have anywhere to put my stuff. I lost everything. I have nothing. Okay, so you all need to come up with a plan to get yourself back together now. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen any of these, like, programs at a shelter where you stay for a certain amount of time and be in Aiken? There's one, um, there's a shelter out in Pontiac, or it's like a... It's like a, it's like a structured living or something. It's it's a Christian based one, and it um it's a six month program, and you can bring your kids there, and then they help you find housing after. They also have programs down here in Detroit, um that I want to look into where people say that after so many months that they give you an apartment and pay your rent. Mm -hmm. So I want to look into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what everybody was telling me about. For real, you should. Yeah. How can we come up with a course of action? I guess we got to take it one step at a time because, you know, you were used to being in this world with your husband. Yeah. So probably you need to set up some kind of, like, counseling or therapy. Um, see what kind of resources are out there and how I can get on that wait list that Detroit has. Yeah. And then um, clothes. You know, you told me about the clothes. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, people can help, like, donate to any to, It's a spot right now where, where uh, I had volunteered here, like, years ago. Okay. Years ago. Um, and they do got, like, resources in here, kids for women. Okay. Uh, and I don't, like, I, I never slept here, but I, I think it's fairly safe, okay. you know? I think it's fairly safe. You could sleep there? It's like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yep, yep. All right. Yeah. 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 We yeah. just start there. I'm, I'm going to have to look it up when we're done. Yeah. And find a name. Yeah. So, because I would guess that, I would assume that the first step would be getting you in a situation where you're comfortable. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? Right. Because safe and comfortable is two different things. Right. Very, and very you know different things. Out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. the first shelter I went to was co-ed. Uh, the one that I'm at, I'm at a co-ed one now, but the first one was also co-ed. But the first one I went to, there was, like, guys, like, harassing me. Like, it, it was creepy. And so, like, I I was like, I'd rather be outside. Yeah. And where was that one at? Um, fuck, it was over by Cass Court or I forget what it's called. Okay. Um, over past, um... The Jeffers Projects. I forget the name. There's so many, you know, different names. And the one that I'm I'm talking about is more towards um, like Highland Park. No, I yeah, wasn't. Yeah, and it's all women. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. And I know they will have some resources there for you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I go for sure. At least I can just make sure you got something, some clean interview clothes. Yeah. You know, okay. Like, yeah, that would be nice. They can like, even if you can get in one of these shelter programs, mm -hmm. where you at least got somewhere to go. Right. Every night. Right. You know. Right. Because it's hit or miss. Like if you don't. Yeah. Where's the mic? The mic's on. Oh, it's on. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
I don't think a lot. Probably when I stood up just yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But, um. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so, we got our force of action. We got our plan. Um, is there anything you want to, like, warn people about as far as, like, sleeping out here, like, other ladies? Because. Well, I don't think you. There's not really, like, a way to, like. If you're out here, there's no. There's no warning. Like, there's nothing you can do to prevent things happening if you're out here. Right. What I would like to say to people is don't take what you have for granted. Because you never know when it's going to be taken from you. Period. Period. You just don't know. 